Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Adventures in Arcane Space. Once again, I am your Dungeon Master, Alt Dragon, and our players are... Hi, I'm Captain Higgins, Corporal First Class, and I play a gift fighter. Hi, I'm Dovey Bingo Shepherd. I play Braxton Miak, who's a human fighter from an asteroid close to Brown. Hi, I'm Daikami Sama, and I play Solas Ab Ebha, who is a half eleven cleric and mage. Hi, I'm James. I play Akar, human pal and a brawl, and I help all turn on the recording this time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kiji Kun. I'm S I play Sinray. She is an elven courier. Hi, I'm Levely Sana, an elven wild mage. Uh, hi, I'm Saka. I play Lafto Minglade. He is an elven specialty priest of the Fey Jester, and he's a part-time smuggler. Uh, he's also the troubleshoot, um, trouble finder of the group. Uh, when have you ever smuggled anything? Yeah, I was about to ask that. Uh, he, uh, he does stuff the GM doesn't know about, apparently. Apparently so. I think he's, I heard he's budgie smuggler. I have no. no idea what that means, and I'm not sure I want no. to know. <laughs> Are you talking about bungees, like bungee jumping? No, the last I time I are. heard that was at college. <laughs> what college did you go to? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting college. Well then. So the, uh, the party was going to split up today, which is fantastic. I love it so much. Do it more often, please. Um... <laughs> if we do that, then you're going to kill us. No, only half the party gets killed. Exactly. The other half, fine. yeah. See, it's it's well, it's just all about uh, um, keeping people on their toes and changing things up. The great I mean, thing. I mean, this is basically contingency plan for the party because now all can't uh, party wipe us all at the same time. No, no. Oh. The great thing is he can kill the first half of us, reanimate our corpses, and get us to kill ourselves. That'd be he pretty great. I should just... do that. We could can. destroy the asteroid. That would party wipe us. Yeah, but that's no fun. It has to has to have uh, um, that uh, you know that dread of you guys seeing the death coming slowly as the scarecrow hits Sinray over and over again slowly until Akar pulls out a wand and blinds it. And me. All right, so. Uh, Half the party was going to visit Lurik, while the other half was going to uh, let Laftal rememorize all of his spells, and then <laughs> they were going to go visit Malva. Um, also, a uh, quick note, um, there was some talk about uh, the Talisman of Memorization. After the session last time, um, I re-looked at that item. It doesn't work for priests. It only works for wizards. So, wouldn't have uh, helped out uh, Laftal here anyway. Yay! Maybe. Alright, so, Higamus, Ocker, Braxen, Leva, uh, you're heading down to Lurk's camp, uh, um, basically, you know, shortly after sunrise and everything like that. Yeah, first thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you guys gonna do anything on the way, or just gonna head straight there? Well, Braxen, a keep a lookout for more cat tracks. I don't have anything. Okay. I don't really have anything. Okay. Um, so you get down to uh, um, their camp, find them um, you know, eating breakfast, uh, um, taking care of some morning chores, that sort of thing around camp. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they see you coming and um, give you a greeting upon, you know, you're getting within... 20 feet or so. Hey, of so we had camp. a pretty crazy night, so we got attacked by these wolves that were made of plants? Lurk kind of looks at you and Lurk kind of looks at you and says scarecrow? What? Uh, hello, Lurk. <laughs> What's his name again? Lark? Lurk. Lurk? Yeah. Lurk. Hello, Lurk. 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 says hello. <laughs> he kind of looks at Ocker and says you're pulling my leg, right? Nope. I wish he was. Huh. It was an animated scarecrow and monsters did, made out of plant matter. Did, did, did these things leave uh, cat tracks? They 
get close. Uh, we didn't check. It, we didn't. We didn't have any ability to check for tracks, though. It was in uh, deep fog too last night. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, yeah. yeah, it was uh, pretty horrible foggy, fog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, plus, new, none of us here are really trackers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll be looking side, for cast I, tracks. On the bright side, it. they can be blinded. I tested that myself by using uh, this wand to make a great flash of light that blinded most of them. TMI, Ocker. TMI. <laughs> well, it's just a wand of light. <laughs> Don't have to give them our full life stories here. Okay. Hmm, well, um... I mean, maybe they're responsible for those uh, tracks, although you, you said that they're... They appear to be like uh, dogs of some sort. Yeah, kind of yeah. wolfy. Um, uh, yeah, except they're made of. It's like plants. Plants uh, and mud. Super. Well, uh, I I followed the uh, the tracks uh, yesterday as much as I could. Um, they seem to be coming away from uh, town and um, perhaps going in the direction of the swamp. Um. I suppose they could have been coming to to our camper Finnan's house, but I uh, didn't see any. Yeah. Um, I mean, we didn't see anything here, and um, I didn't check with Finnan, but uh, I didn't see any tracks around his house. Uh, we got yeah. drawn out by the scarecrow because it, it made a scream that sounded like a woman's. Yeah, it's very clever. So it drew, draw, drew us out, and then it ambushed us with its. Uh, Weird plant animal minions. Well, um, yep. I, uh, I'm, I'm genuinely shocked. We have seen nothing of the sort around here. Uh, we were up at the tower, so that might explain it. There must be some sort of spell cast or summoning these things. Yeah. Or creating them. Everyone does say that the, uh, the tower is haunted. I mean, I suppose there could be some sort of spirits animating... Uh, matter. We or... it... well, I I don't know I don't know spirits very well. I'm pretty sure they weren't undead. We tried using turn undead on them and it didn't seem to work. Yeah, and they weren't actually in the tower. We haven't had any problems in the tower since. Um, yeah, in the tower itself, we've been perfectly fine. He kind of rubs his chin, says, well, "That's uh, outside of my uh, my knowledge. That's for sure." Maybe we'll have to sweep through the swamp later. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, you do, say... do be careful. I um, mm. uh, it seems like a dangerous place. Hmm. Yeah, this the scarecrow had this thing where it could like hypnotize somebody if they look at it. It did that to Braxton here, and I had that's the reason why I had to use the wand of light. Hmm. I uh, I really don't know anything about those sorts of things. Um. But, uh, I don't know, I mean, you, you say you tried to, uh, wipe out the undead spirits, but, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe you weren't powerful enough, maybe your gods weren't with you. I don't know, it seems, seems to me like it's, uh, some sort of spirits at work. Like, I, like everyone says, uh, the place up there is haunted. Could be. Or it could yeah. be a spellcaster animating, like, sticks and mud to turn into minions of theirs. Mm. You never um, know with spellcasters; they can do some weird stuff. I haven't seen any, uh, you know, real clear signs of uh, wizardry uh, here. I mean, uh, the, the people here are pretty simple. Yeah, we haven't seen any real signs of it either. But it, other than the undead, it seems like the only real explanation. You know. <sighs> well, um. You said you'd done some tracking and that sort of thing, preliminary tracking? Yeah, I could show you the uh, the tracks that I did find and um, where I was able to follow them. Okay, let's do that. Sounds good. All right. Uh, just uh, let's finish up our uh, breakfast here, if you don't mind. You know, oh, yeah. Sure. Welcome to have a seat. Um, you got some water skins if you're uh, thirsty. Sure, and I'll uh, plop down on... Uh, Something that looks like it won't break. <laughs> uh, you take a seat on um, kind of a, a, a big log that uh, uh, has some free space on one end that uh, one of the other members of his group is sitting at. 
And uh, as you do so, it does, you know, kind of lift him up a bit, you know, about six inches into the air before settling back down again. Uh, which he, <laughs> he, he lets out, it's one of the twins. And he lets out a, a bit of a um, shocked, you know, gasp kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and then <laughs> looks at you and uh, uh, chuckles a bit. Oh, I'll, I'll, uh, my ear toss will go back a little bit. Like, oh, excuse me. Uh, I forget how small people are sometimes. No, no, that's fine. Uh, I don't, don't think that this was, uh, expecting to have someone, uh, of your stature, uh, taking a seat on it. That's for sure. <laughs> Everyone has a good <laughs> chuckle over it. I'll laugh about that. Uh, it only takes them about uh, uh, ten, fifteen minutes to finish up their uh, their meal and and get things you know tidy and straightened up, um, and uh, with uh, Lurk leading the way, he takes you out to the muddy spot where you first indicated the footprints, mm -hmm. and um, they're they've definitely degraded since the last time that you you came. Uh, there have been occasional short showers, um, so that, that has definitely done a wor done uh, done a number on it. Um, but Lurik also uh, takes you around to some other points that uh, he was able to determine um, the uh, cat paw footprints, uh, and they don't stray too far from town, really. Um, he he says that he tried to find. Um, you know, more prints uh, mm. out in this area. You know, he, he scouted all around there and he was not able to uh, find any. Um, but he also says, you know, he, he, he knows some tracking, but he's certainly no expert. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well... They, they, uh, which way are these th tracks pointing towards again? Um, they seem to be going in this direction, something like that, you know. So, uh, assuming, you know, north, south, east, west kind of thing on this map, uh, essentially mm -hmm. southeast. I got uh, you. Whose house is that over there? Or can I see that house? Do I know it's there? That one there? Here. <laughs> I click right on, on the west side, side of the map. The very edge of the map. Oh, oh, um, you guys have not been out there. So you saw well, it from the... I'm, uh... I'm asking, uh, Lurik. Oh, um, oh, sorry. Um, well, you wouldn't see it from here. Oh. Um, you saw it from up on the hill. Uh, all of those, uh, dots that, that are marked but don't have any names by them or anything like that. Um, those are structures that you saw from up on the hill. Uh, when you're down yeah. here, you can't see them because the, just okay. the, the ground's too uneven uh, at the low level. You need the height to, to see it. But if you ask him uh, about okay. a structure up in that direction, he he can yeah. he might be able to answer that if you want to. Yeah. Um, you know, when I was up on on top of the hill, I saw I think some sort of house or building off in the towards that direction. And I'll point towards that direction there. Oh yeah, yeah. There, there's a, there's a farmhouse out there. Um, we've been by, but uh, the people there aren't too friendly. Um, uh, they, they did lose a, a sheep uh, just a few days ago, however, or at least we found a, a dead sheep in the area. Mm. Was there anything? Uh, what, what did the wounds on that thing look like? Uh, I mean. If I didn't know Betty better, it would, it, I would say that that something with a uh, slash at it with like three daggers in a row or something. I, I've never seen animal claws of the sort. Uh, it wasn't eaten. Um, I mean, there were there were a few you know like crows around when we got there, but uh, uh, whatever killed it didn't eat it. It just tore it apart. Um, huh? Right. You said it looked like. Like a, they, they a were, slashing weapon? Yeah, they're deep, deep wounds. Claws? Well, I mean, they, they might have been claws, but I, you know, I mean, even a bear doesn't have claws that that big. Hmm. Were they? Um, so they were they uh, claws? You know, they they they're they tend to be uh, wide, 
uh, were these wide or uh, narrow um, well, they slashes? Were, they were deep, you said. They but... were deep, um, and, you know, they were, they were uh, parallel slash marks, which is, you know, which is what you'd expect for, to see from claws. But, uh, again, I've never seen anything that deep. Hmm. Old. Mm-hmm. Does Braxton know of any weapons like that? Not really. Okay. He would, and and Lurk would say if he he thought it was an actual weapon, he was just more giving the the dagger as a right. comparison no, of so its size and, and depth and everything like that. I think I remember seeing something like that in Dark Sun, but I didn't know that Braxton would have seen anything like that. Oh, I mean, there are there are weapons that you can use in your hands that are like parallel claws, but you don't yeah. know anything about those. Okay. Hmm. Huh? Well, let's, uh... Did you see any tracks out there when you uh, came across a sheep? You know, I mean, that's the weird thing, is that uh, I've come across a few uh, a few dead sheep now and um, have not seen a dang track uh, anywhere. And that's weird, because you say... Uh, the, uh, were all the dead sheep uh, killed in a similar manner? Yeah. Similar wounds? Yep. Yeah. And you say it, that looked like a big something that did that, huh? Mm-hmm. Left no tracks. Not that I could find. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm not the not an expert. I something wonder... that big. That'd be like me walking around doing that sort of stuff. And I kind of lift up my feet a little bit there. Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, sometimes things can have a lot bigger claws than they uh, they appear and stuff like that, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I ordinarily I would expect uh, you know claws that deep to be on something big. I wonder if we could be looking at something that disguises itself as a sheep. If you're not finding tracks, you mean like a wolf in sheep's clothing? Yeah, kind of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, Lurik um, Lurik gives a, a laugh. Uh, I mean, I suppose, but uh, I, I mean, don't we don't have any evidence of that. That's just throwing something out there. No, but that would explain why our friend hasn't found any tracks. If there's something that looks exactly like a sheep, that walks up to another sheep, and then murders it, there'd be no evidence, would there? Yeah, it could be. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of stumped. Uh, people around here, uh, I'm not really not really want for talking. I try. I've I've tried. You know, going to the the pub every once in a while and uh, um, you know, buy a few rounds, but. I don't have the money to, to keep doing that, and it only goes so far. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's uh, well, uh, let's... Something uh, definitely has people here spooked, though. That's for sure. And then... Yeah, th- there's been a couple times where people almost started talking to us about something, but then thought better of it. Hmm. Well, let's uh, follow these tracks into the direction that they were headed. And see if we can't come across anything like that along the way. All right. Um, so you're gonna like basically head in the uh, this direction-ish kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See okay. if the, anything pops up along the way. Okay. All right. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Um. So you set out uh, with him. Uh, he points out the uh, other places that uh, um he uh, noticed tracks. At this point, um, they're pretty much all gone. Um, the ones that he saw. All and... going towards the same direction? Yeah. But... Okay. Around here, he says that he, he hasn't found any tracks. So as you're going down this way, he's uh, he's saying that, you know... He points out to some spots that if it, if the creature passed through there, he would have expected the, to see some tracks because it was kind of muddy, little, you know, low-lying areas that occasionally collect water. Um, and he says he didn't, he didn't see anything. How, uh, huh. how far do you want to go? I mean, you can go up to the, the swamp if you want to. Go up to the swamp, yeah, let's okay. do that. Um, real quick, um, mm-hmm. this is the town, right? Yeah. Yeah, that collection of dots. And then, uh, this thing off to the side, what was, what was that? That's not labeled. Uh, you haven't been there, um, but, uh, Lurik says that, uh, um, uh, I mean, you, you did see it from up on the uh, tower. Uh, if you ask him about uh, another building real close to town, um, 
he says, Oh, that, yeah, um, uh, you may have seen him about town. There's a guy who kind of kind of makes his money uh, begging. He's got a club foot, hunchback. Hmm. That's where oh, he yeah, lives. Yeah. That's where he lives. It's okay. uh, basically just a shack. Oh, maybe he's... Have you talked to him, Will? Uh, tried. He's not exactly what I would say all there up there. Uh, is he more forthcoming than the others, though? Not really. I mean, uh, in, in he's terms got the of same panic on him too. Well, no, not so much. But uh, it's hard to make anything any headway with uh, talking to him. He uh. He's just not there, you know? Ah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Maybe we maybe we'd learn something from him. If we can listen to him and fish out information from his murmurings. That and I'm pretty sure he uh he mostly makes his money by uh begging. Mm. Yeah. Which it's not exactly a lucrative uh job around here if you uh if you hadn't guessed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's continue on to see what we come across along the way to the swamp. Okay. No, you has to go in there, but we'll take a look at around there. Uh, you get to the uh, the edge of the swamp. Uh, it's a pretty dismal place. Uh, there's still fog blanketing much of it. Um, it's the lowest line area here. It's it's pretty clear that. Uh, um, you know, when it frequently rains, uh, much of the water ends up draining into this area. Uh, but it's not so uh, shallow that it actually forms a lake or something like that. Um, or deep, I should say. Um, so it's it's very marshy, and as you're getting close, it gets really, really muddy. And uh, um, uh, Lurik, you know, again, points out that he didn't see any, any uh, paw marks, so... He's inclined to say that whatever it was, whatever left those, uh, um, unless it could fly, he doesn't think it went into the into the swamp. Mm, okay. So maybe it turned. Okay. Maybe it turned to the left. Maybe. Uh, maybe. real quick, what, where's the uh, the last area coming from? In between here and uh, Finian's house, Finian's house. Uh, that he saw the prints or tracks. Basically, it was before you get to Finnan's house. Right before that. And um, then they... somewhere before it, and not not. And then there's like... sightings. Sorry, and then there's sightings. Uh, all the way up towards. Uh, town. What's that name? Ar to town. Yeah. But not past town. Not that he found. Huh. So it's just between those two points, basically. Yeah. Town and. The house. Huh. Okay. Uh, stay here for just a moment. Uh, old what I want to do is I want to fly up and kind of do a look around the edge there, see if I can see further into the swamp at all and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, so you basically leap into the air and uh, um, uh, wings actually sprout from your boots, which is gives it the power of flight, just little ones. Um, and uh, much to the uh, uh, surprise and amazement of Lurik's party, uh, you take off, and you're, you're still just kind of skirting the edge, right? Not actually going deep yeah, in there. Not actually, I don't want to go deep in there, no. Yeah. Um, Something for to jump up and snatch. Me right, and right. Um, there's... There um it's not like a dense forest, but there are trees all over the place, um, kind of willow trees and um, Those swampy trees. trees. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they give you know kind of partial cover on anything on the surface. Um, it's very marshy. Like it, it looks like most of the the ground it would be pretty soft, um, but you don't really see much actual standing water. Um, there's some, uh, uh, berry bushes, uh, throughout, um, and bushes, huh? 
really that's about it that you can see. Um, it, it's still pretty uh, foggy throughout there. Hmm. Berry bushes? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Be careful around berry bushes. They yeah, yeah, Higgins is thinking about that. It'd be fresh bushes, and maybe he wouldn't have to eat so much of Laftel's, uh plants. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no. Can we all get no, diarrhea? I think, uh, I think, uh, I think I'll be, uh, careful in this regard here. I don't know what's in there. Uh, the berries are pretty large. I mean, not like, you know, like fist size, but, um, maybe strawberry sized, um, kind of a, a bright blue. Not like... Bright blue, huh? Not, 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 like, fluorescent blue, but, um... A, a cheerful blue color as opposed to the darker blue of a, a standard blueberry. Uh, is there any spots near any of those berry bushes I see uh, when I'm flying around that looks like it more solid ground? Um, the ground looks soft, like but it doesn't look like uh, um, the ground is water. I mean, it all pretty much looks solid. Ish. Okay. Uh, if it's not like too overgrown of an area, like uh, I want an area where if I need to, I can get out easily. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll stop down and grab some berries. Okay. Um, keep in mind that this is uh, at a minimum a few hundred feet into the the swamp from where everyone else has stopped. Yeah. Is there, um, there's not, like, a lot of, uh, other bushes or anything in that area, right? Um, well, the, the berry bushes themselves are, are scattered. You see, you can see at least three of them just from where you are. Alright, I'll stop and pick some. I'll just try it. <laughs> okay. Alright, uh, as you're, uh, um, going down to land, um, you see that they have large, uh, these bushes have large leaves uh, kind of spread out on the ground to soak up the sunlight. Oh, stay away from that. <laughs> and as you are uh, landing, uh, one of the uh, leaves does... You try to avoid it, but they are big. And... Uh, it basically lightning fast uh, snaps shut on you um, oh, just God. as you're landing, and uh, you are you are basically uh, uh, completely trapped in uh, in this leave. My whole body's trapped in it. Uh, really? Yeah, they're very big leaves. All right, uh, and I'm they. Gonna, way I'm gonna look for like this. The stem or the connecting hold, to the hold on, hold so on, hold on. It. This is this is like hundreds of feet away. Uh, you see Higamus go down, but you don't see this happen to him. Okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna run over to see what happened to him. What? But to he just went down. You he was. You don't see anything happen to him. Well, I'm gonna run over and see why he went down. Okay. Bra Brax is gonna call out to Higamus. You okay? I don't hear them. Uh, no, you would. It's only, it's a <laughs> few hundred feet. Oh, I would hear them. Yeah, you would hear. Oh, Take I thought you head. said I was like all Where inside this thing. Oh well, I mean, you're 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 not like. Uh, I mean, you're, you're you're trapped, but you're not um, and env completely enveloped. No, I, I'll yell. Oh, watch out! Large leaves are traps, and I'm going to cut myself out. I can. Okay. Um. Do you have a dagger on you? I sure do. Okay. Got a couple of them. Uh, you are going to uh, need to roll uh, a dexterity check to see if you can get your um, your dagger out. Because, you know, okay. this thing has wrapped up around you. Okay. And I'm good at dexterity. Yeah, exactly. I'm not good at dexterity. Yeah. <laughs> Unless your horn of blessing would help your laughter. 
Right, Braxton says oh, pass. We might want to go in and help him. Uh, uh, Lurk, anyway. Lurk says, uh, "Be careful. Uh, the, the ground isn't solid everywhere." Yeah, I'm looking for the most solid-looking ground. I pass. Oh, the... Braxton's okay. Braxton's gonna Braxton's gonna press one of his buttons that makes a stick. What have we got? Levi's gonna fly. I'm okay. going to draw my long sword and head down. All right, everyone, go ahead and uh, roll for initiative. Then, if you're going to be doing stuff, initiative. What should I roll for? Um, poking the ground with uh, three. with an extended spear. Three. Right. Uh, so I just roll for my dagger, I guess. Yes. Uh, didn't click my token. Where is my token on the big map? Down at the bottom. Down below the town. Ah, yeah, sorry about that. Right, I'll put the original number in. Oh, God. <laughs> so, That's oh, oh all, are these uh, magical daggers uh, faster than normal daggers? Uh, you won't know until you know it's, uh, um... Oh, okay. Gambit modifier? Yeah. Hmm. I got four the first time. Waxen's name is not visible again. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't persist across sheets right now. Why? Because I haven't fixed it. Why doesn't... I haven't fixed oh, it. Oh, right. Okay. Completely. No, I was going to say, why, why does Roll20 like me? Yeah, World 20 just hates you. That's why you kept missing yeah. back when you had that, uh... Someone camera. at Roll 20 heard one of my jokes, decided to raise me. No. We'll fix it right now. <laughs> no, that's alright, I'm not money. Oh, too late, I'm already fixing it. <laughs> yeah. They started doing it ever since you uh, lit yourself on fire that one time. Okay, everyone rolled. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Braxton, you were going to start uh, to slowly um, inch your way in, testing the ground ahead of you. Yeah. Well, basically, he's going to poke the ground with a spear to make sure he's not going to sink. Right. You guys heard of me? I see is the thing about the big leaves, right? Yeah, they did. Okay. Yeah. And if anything with big leaves has a go at him, he'll spin the spear around. Okay. Um, so it's going to take you a while to get in there, Braxton. Mm -hmm. But um, so you you start uh, uh, moving in slowly, uh, poking the ground. Uh, Leva, you were casting fly on yourself. Yes. Okay. So you do that. Um, uh. Higamus. You got your dagger out, so you can go ahead and make an attack roll. Attack roll, okay. Um, where did I put this? Bit? And you're not getting your uh, strength bonus because you're trapped. Yeah, was, uh, but do I get my strength bonus for plus to hit? Uh, not for the plus to hit. You'll get your strength bonus for your damage, but not your plus to hit. Oh, okay. So it's just a d20 in this case, because I don't know what the daggers actually do. That goes 13. All right. Uh, you do manage to uh, uh, get the um, dagger into the leaf. Uh, so that is going to be a 1d4 plus 4, uh, since you can only get the maximum damage of the, uh, of your strength right now, based on the weapon okay. type. Oh. Is it just 1d4, or is it 2d4? Uh, it's 2d4 when you throw it. Oh, okay. You gotta throw oh. it. Woo! Gotcha. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you get a good cut in, but, uh, it's, you know... 
ha you have not been able to uh, free yourself uh, yet with that. Alt, did mm -hmm. you roll level the variation for? I did not. I should do that. See if there was a uh, wild surge. Thank you. Give me just a second. Okay. Yeah, you did fly. Good. <laughs> right. You're flying like a bird. Uh, Higmas, well. as you are um, trying to uh, cut your way free with that, uh, um, uh, with your dagger, mm -hmm. um, another uh, leaf uh, kind of whips up, and you see that it's... Uh, long and jagged looking and appears surprisingly strong. Okay. Mm. And it slices across you just as uh, Oh, did I get a hit point back from uh, last night's sleep? Yeah, did you not put it down? No. Are you sure you didn't put it down? No, I'm not sure. Okay, then if you're not sure, then I'd say that you probably did, because I'm pretty sure I said so. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, yeah I think I did one on. Okay. I know I did mine. And the, uh, um, these sharp leaves come slashing at you, and they are sharp. You feel them uh -huh. cut into your flesh. For nine points of damage. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that was three of them. So... Ocker, you, uh, you're basically uh, running headlong into the swamp in the direction that uh, Higamus went down? Yeah, do I uh, see... Yeah, I'm heading after Higamus. Do I see the thing that's attacking him? Not yet. Um, the ground underfoot is, uh, very soft and squishy. You slip a couple times, but maintain your balance, um, running in his direction. Uh, you think you might have made it halfway to where he is. Okay. Initiative time. Right. So he's Braxton the slowest. Um, Can you see any raised bits of ground? Everything looks like raised bits of ground. Like, there isn't a whole lot of uh, standing and water. And I rolled the same initiative twice! It happens. Can, can I see, uh, Hegemus? Uh, uh yeah, I'm... now that you're up in the air, yes you can. Okay. What I'm, what I'm wondering, Ord, is if there's higher bits where Brax could jump from high bit to high bit. No, you do not see, like, little tufts of ground sticking out that are obvious, like, stepping platform thingies. Alright. Well, can, uh, can Braxton make his spear a bit longer and poke further bits and take longer strides? Uh, not really? I mean, you're, you're poking the ground in front of you before you're stepping, so that's really all you can do. Yeah, but, like, he could poke further away and, and take a jump. Or a long stride. Yeah, uh... pole <laughs> <laughs> that that seems even more likely to get you into trouble. Okay. Uh, whoever said the Brexian was a bright one? I don't think that there's that there's anything to do with uh, um, intelligence here. Yeah, Brexian was very bright when he caught fire. Uh, you can tell that, that Lurik is very, um, averse to entering the swamp. Uh, he, uh, he, he's drawn his, uh, bow and, and he's, uh, he calls out and his companions are the same. They're, they're, they're like, uh, you can tell that they, they have no interest in, in coming in to the swamp. 
Uh, Braxton, uh, you continue to, uh, poke and, uh, uh make your way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do manage to um, continue to so find solid footing as you go, but you are definitely going uh, slowly. All right. Leva, you're going to cast Enlarge. On Hegemus, yes. Yep. I want him to, to, to be let go by the, by the leaves. Okay. Now they're just holding a bigger gif. All right. Um, you cast your spell, and Higamus does get about ten percent larger. However, you can tell that because of the restraint that he's under, the spell does not uh, make him any larger than that. Okay. So Higamus, you're doing an extra ten percent damage. Oh, great! It's your turn. All right. I guess I'm going to try to open this thing up again. All right. Oops. <laughs> All right, that's a hit. Okay. One D four plus four. How do I do this? One D four plus four. Yeah, but ten percent on top of that. Oh, um, I I can mentally do it. Okay. Cool. Isn't that just going to be one? Yeah, pretty much. It's going to be one. Yeah. All right. Um, you uh, you feel the uh, the dagger blade uh, hit the actual stem of the leaf and uh, sticky sap like um substance starts uh, uh flowing pretty profusely uh and the this enormous leaf wrapped around you um kind of shudders and retracts away uh freeing you however uh three more of the i mean the, those three uh sharp leaves do uh, come slashing at you But because you were able to actually dodge this time, only one of them hits for two points of damage. Owie. Ocker. Okay, I'm still trying to make my way over the Higmas and whatever's going on with him. Okay. All right, uh, you managed to uh, maintain your footing. And uh, you realize, uh, just as you're getting to Higmus, that uh, you may have stepped on another one of these leaves. Because <laughs> the ground beneath you suddenly uh, um, shifts, okay. and the leaves snap up trying to get you. But you apparently just stepped on the edge, and you're able to uh, uh, dodge away as it snaps up uh, where you just were. Do I see the thing that's attacking Higmus with leaves? Uh, well, you'd guess that it's a bush with some, uh, um, large blue berries at the center. Can I attempt to attack it since... Next round you can, because this round you just okay. got to him. Okay. I'm here to help! So, new right. round. Uh, do I get my next attack? Mm, no, because of the nature of what was going on. Okay. I'm going to say no. Okay. Because basically, the last round, you were trying to cut yourself free as opposed to, like, really attack it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're gonna have to kill this thing. Okay. Brex is poking more slowly this round. <laughs> Clearly, he's seen a suspicious route. Would my ring have protected me from getting, like, caught up in that thing? No. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Like someone could still um, tie a rope around you, kind of thing. 
Okay. So, uh, so are you dropping the dagger and pulling your blade out? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Leva's going first. You are casting magic missile. Let's see if there's yes. a level variation. Uh, you normally get five missiles anyway, correct? Yes. Yeah, so you get five missiles. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, flying in the air above this uh, um, melee, um, Leva points her fingers at the... Were you going for the leaves that are slashing, or are you going for the, the bush at the center? I'm going for the leaves that are holding uh, Hegemus. Well, he's already they freed himself. Him. Oh, okay, then I'm going for the leaves that are slashing. Okay. Alright, um, so your uh, missiles fly out, and uh, each one in succession strikes against uh, the nearest leaf um, that has been slashing at uh, uh, Hygmus, and with the impact of the fifth one, um, it shudders and kind of the 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 leaf part kind of gets ripped off by that last uh, um, missile, and it, it just kind of, like, waggles around in the air, dripping uh, sap on the ground. Good job! So only two of them, only two of these leaves can uh, be brought to bear on uh, Hegemus now. These blueberries are going to taste so good once they're... <laughs> <laughs> All the hard work just makes it taste better. All right, Ocker. I'm going to go for the bush in the center to attack it with my longsword. Okay. Uh, so... uh, yeah, watch out for the bears. <laughs> so, uh, normal d20 roll? Yep. <laughs> nice. Right, I me, crit the bush. Let me give it a uh, saving throw versus death. Is it medium or oh. large? Oh, it's it's large. This thing this thing is spread out across a really big area. Like now that you're close in, you can see that uh, this is taking up, uh, um, you know, like the okay. the the, the, oh, the the whole plant itself is like thirty feet. Across, including all Want of these Want me to leaves. roll double damage? Yep. I don't think I really have a crit chart for slashing against uh, plant. Oh dear. <laughs> so, 16 damage. What do you just do against wood? Well, there isn't that either. It's it's no. humanoid, animal, and monster. Oh. I suppose it would be a monster. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Well, that is going to be weapon smaller anyway, so it's probably not going to be much real effect. Let me just see what... what you get with like slashing. Yeah, there's no real effect with that. Un unfortunately, your your weapon is too small to really have uh, any serious effect other than double damage. So, but the double damage still did a lot. Yeah, double damage is still good. It's like a machete going through the bush. All right, Braxton, you uh, uh, continue to uh, poke your way through. Uh, you multiple times uh, spot places where if you'd just been rushing forward, you would have uh, um, definitely sunk down and into the mire, uh, but you're mm -hmm. able to uh, not do so. Okay. Hey, My God Braxton. led me over without sinking. That's, that's how I think about this. <laughs> can, can Braxton somehow mark the safe route back? No. No? No. Okay. 
I mean, you're 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 trying to go as fast as you can, but fair enough. Yes, so. no. All right, Higamus. All right. Um, we're gonna swing at what would I would appear to be like the base of this thing. Okay, so you're waiting further in to get to the the bush itself. Yeah. Okay. That goes uh, 13. I thought that was a 1 at first, and I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. That is, uh, that is a hit. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, wow. You said this is large? Yeah. Oh, goody. Take that um, tree, or bush. You, uh, you slash nice. right through it, clearly severing the, uh, um, the base trunk of that. It, uh, kind of lifts up and, and falls over. However, uh, it's not quite dead yet, as it's, uh, those sharp leaves make, uh, two attacks against, uh, you and two attacks against Ocker. And yeah. that's two hits against uh, Higmus. Let's see. Oh, no. For five points of damage. Oh. And then two hits again, two attacks against uh, Ocker. Also two hits for six points of damage. But then okay. the, uh, all of the leaves stop moving. Oh, it had a death throes? No, it's just that uh, um, generally cutting a, through a trunk of a, a plant doesn't actually like directly kill it. Oh, okay. Is it dead, though? It is dead now, though. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm going to give Higgins a high five. <laughs> Hard work I had to do to get some blueberries uh, watch out yeah. for the leaves Leva wants to use uh, herbalism to figure out what those berries are and what those trees are do those bushes are uh, go ahead and roll. Can, she, can she take some samples uh, you can go ahead and roll Higamus I think is uh, um, collecting the berries Pick. yep alright <laughs> I'll, have to rely okay. on I'll have to ask uh, Laftel later, since he's our other herbalist. Yeah, you've never uh, you've never seen anything like this before. You have no idea what it is. Okay. Um, Higamus, as you go to, uh, retrieve your dagger after collecting the berries, um, you do step into a spot that you thought was solid ground, and, uh, you sink down to your, uh, your knees, and, uh, you're pretty <laughs> well mired there. <sighs> hey, uh, I'll, I'll stop, like, squir squirming, because that's bad, I'm told. Uh, Braxton, could you, could you hand me your rope? <laughs> or tie off the rope to the what's left of that bush there? Uh, there's, the stump of it? There's, there's nothing much left of that bush that he can tie well, it to. Well, I mean, to. the stump. There's, the there's stump. a tree around. He yeah, can tie okay, to. sure. Just be careful. And, uh... Tie my rope to what? All right, have your rope tied to uh, one of the trees over there. Don't, like, go over it. Have your rope tied to that over there. And uh, lay down next to me so I can pull myself out. There's oh, a spot right. here that I kind of sunk down into. And not tie it to you and pull you out. I don't know if that rope can pull me out. Well, but I can pull myself out if I can... I don't know, but I can pull to something. Out. I can pull myself out, is what I'm saying. Right. But I just need something solid to pull. Well, yeah. Can uh, Braxton send one end of his rope to... Is there a tree behind him? Yeah. 
Okay, send one end of his rope backwards to a tree, and then send the other end to Higamus. Okay. Uh, by the way, Higamus, um, sinking in like that did uh, did make it easier to find your uh, your dagger, though. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I'd be extra disappointed if it was gone forever. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be gone forever. It'd just be gone until someone drains the swamp. All right. It would. How would we dr even drain a swamp? Uh, it's doable. It just takes a lot of work. Anyway, um, you need uh, give me a d20 roll plus your strength score. D20 plus my strength. Yep. Would it help if Braxton got nuts in the rope? No. Not bad. Okay, uh, you are uh, able to pull yourself out uh, um, slowly but easily. Um, although there's a couple times when it almost sounds like that tree is gonna snap itself. But you do get out onto more solid ground. Oh, thank you, Braxton. No, oh, no problem. Well, you have a uh, pouch full of those berries. How many did I get all together? Um, let's see. They're pretty large. I have a large sack. They're pretty large, so let me see. I actually have two large sacks, so. Uh, you got 22 berries. 22 berries, all right. Yep. Are those berries any use? I don't know. They look good, though, don't they? We should, uh... Yeah, we should have left to take a look at them before we try eating any of them. We should probably get out of the swamp first. Yeah, let's get out of the yeah, swamp. Yeah, let's get out of the swamp. Well, hang on. Are there any other berry bushes nearby? You want to uh, find another uh, one? You can see well, another one further in. Uh, the exact same sort of berry bush. Well, right. we could go after that one, Braxton, but, um... Here, looky here, and I show Braxton uh, the cuts of my hide. Ooh. And look, it it totally ruins my sleeve of my jacket. Oh yeah, Higgins, let me help you with that. Uh, lay on hands. Oh, that's sixteen delicious. hit points. Sixteen. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now let's get out of the swamp. Yeah, well, slowly. I've got an idea. Maybe we could do it later. How about we? Uh... We throw a rock onto that and try and trick it into eating the rock and then lasso it. And then I can go in with my axe and chop it down while it's tied up. Mm -hmm. I think you have an idea there, but... Uh... Well, I mean, if, if we find out they're any use. Mm. They might be uh, okay. they might be poisonous and no use to you. Oh, uh, maybe. But they look delicious, don't they? Yeah, I don't know if we want to plant those the seeds from that on our asteroid. Maybe. Or maybe, maybe we maybe, do actually. Maybe we do. Yeah, we could <laughs> have an asteroid. But let's get let's get out of the swamp here. Uh, All right. In case there's other things here besides these. Well, I I can lead the way. Okay. Uh, Braxton will lead the way back after getting his rope back. Um, um, I will also pop out my uh, pole and uh, help him out with it. Okay. Uh, Braxton, <laughs> give me a dexterity check. Okay. This is when I fall in the mud. That's good enough. Uh, yeah. So you turn around and uh, are, are like, uh, you know, follow me, I know the way, and almost get yourself trapped in uh, mud. You feel your, your feet si begin to sink down as you took one step forward and were preparing to uh, um, use your uh, the rod to uh, yeah. test the ground. Uh, and you manage to leap back just in time. Ooh, says, lucky. Don't don't tread on that bit. Gotcha. 
Roger, Roger. Let's uh, head on out. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Ocker, you have gotten yourself uh, mired in the muck up to your uh, uh, past your knees now. Ah, oh, right. damn it. I'm going to uh, tap out up to where I can get close to him. Can I get out? You and, can, you uh, can, you can, yeah, there's some solid ground around you if you want to work on it, yeah. I'm going to work on trying to get out. All right. Can if I can tap race. myself out close to him, uh, along the ground, tap the ground, see, make sure I'm not going to slip. Um, yeah, you get over to him. I get over to him. I'm going to uh, yank him out if I can. Yeah, that's pretty easy for you to yank him out, actually. Okay. All right, let's be careful and uh, kind of feel out the ground in front of you before you take a step on it. Yeah, unfortunately, you're finding that uh, um, the tapping isn't terribly helpful in finding the really soft spots. Really? Yeah, it, it, it helps a bit, but... Some of the stuff sometimes uh, uh, it it seems like the tapping uh, indicates that it's it's firm, and yet but you step on it and it's just what seemed sturdy to the tapping wasn't, and you start sinking down. I mean, it certainly helps you identify things that are uh, actually water covered by a layer of of leafy muck. Yeah, you find that stuff, but the soft ground that just is mud. And you sink into it? No, it's no no real help on, at finding that. So, what do I have to do to get out of the... You're out. Higgum has got okay, you out. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. And then we'll make our way back to the other people. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Leva, of course, is just, like, flying above you, um, I chuckling could along. Fly. Yeah, you could have picked us up, Leva! Hey. <laughs> um, I can't carry somebody with my boots, can I? Probably could actually. Uh, I'm could. not sure what the weight limit uh, is on that. Well, you see. know what? This is a good time to try, I guess. Well, give me a second to uh, take a look at the <laughs> item first, so I know what's uh, going to happen. Uh, do do do. This is when Higgins flies up into the air, holding Oka, and then. Face plants into the mud, <laughs> burying Oka beneath him. Here we it doesn't say. <laughs> you think there's be something that would. Uh, well, that probably means that uh, it allows you to fly as long as you can car carry the stuff yourself. Um, normally. Well, let's see. Um. Who would you want to try to carry out first? Uh, probably Ocker. Ocker, how much do you weigh? And how much does your equipment weigh added up? Uh, okay. Uh, give me a second. Let's see, I weigh 190 by myself. And all of my equipment is, uh... Three hundred and fifty-eight total. That's you and oh. your equipment. Yeah. How does that? How would that affect your movement if you were to just walk with uh, uh, carrying Ocker? Take a miss. Uh, so his was three hundred. What? Three hundred and fifty-eight. Three hundred fifty-eight. I would still be at light or no base regular. Under light encumbrance, and that's with all of light your uh, all of your equipment too, right? Yeah, I don't count my personal weight, do I? Not your personal weight, no. Okay. Yeah, no, I I would still be fine. Okay. All right, then. Yeah, you'd be able to uh, um, carry uh, Ocker out. Uh, what I'm going to say is that um, as long as you can carry it without getting your getting having your movement rate essentially. Um, mm -hmm. With that's what you can no carry encumbrance whatsoever. Well, no. Um, your if your movement rate gets halved. Okay. So I think that's moderate encumbrance, but I'm not sure. 
Uh, okay. Well, okay. Um, so I'm at 50. Oh, yeah. Uh, moderate encumbrance for you is 623. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be hitting that with just Ocker. Yeah. How much does Braxton want? Braxton? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> do, you, do you take away more than Ocker? Maybe. Oh, okay. Well, if you, do, if you do, that means that you're kind of fat. <laughs> Maybe he's fat. I don't think I've ever looked at his uh, width statistic. Oh, uh, you should probably figure that out. Uh, he's 185 for that, his equipment. <laughs> but he's like seven inches shorter. Yeah. So you are kind of fat. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe he's got a barrel chest. You don't know. Yeah. All right, and with all of your equipment? Uh, not sure on that. Bit out of tape with that. Mm. All right, then I'm going to say that Higamus can only carry one of you out, out at a time. Okay, I'll start with Ocker, and I'll say. Um, yeah, Braxton, I think I, I think that what I'll say is it. that you can't carry two people and fly at the same time. That just like gets awkward. You okay. couldn't. Well, 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 I was thinking about uh, yeah. if they like, I kneel down. They lean over my shoulders and I hold them at their waist and do it that way. That's what I was thinking. But uh, if you want to rule that, that's fine. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll say, I mean, it doesn't matter how you, you hold them. Uh, I'm just going to say that carrying two people is just too awkward to actually fly with. Okay. Uh, but they yeah. still have to be within your, your carrying capacity. All right, so... Okay. Um, you do manage to get Ocker out. Um, you'd have to fly and land to get to uh, um, Braxen. How close okay. is Braxen to getting out? Because if it's only a couple of rounds, there's no point. Well, unfortunately, you got stuck again, so that slowed you down. <laughs> All right. So I'll fly. Is there a solid ground somewhere next to you, Braxen? As I fly oh, back. Oh, I thought there was. <laughs> and then I stepped on it. Um, you land in what you think is solid ground, Higmus, and it turns out it is. Oh, good. Good deal. Is Braxton still stuck? Uh, he probably would have gotten himself out by the, by the time you, you got back in. All right. I grab Braxton and fly us out. Okay. Uh, you do manage to uh, get yourselves out. Of course, now basically all three of you are completely covered in mud up to practically your waist. Yeah. That's fine. It's gross. It's gross. We'll just get clean later. Uh, Lurik and, and his companions kind of, uh, you know, apologize for not helping too much, but uh, he, oh, no, he says, "Yeah, he says, uh, I'm I'm not a not a good enough tracker to uh, to know what the where the solid ground is, and uh, you had a." flying sorceress there uh, helping you out. I, I think, thought you had uh, it covered, and I was right. We had it covered. Yeah. It's not the worst thing we've had to fight. Yeah, I don't, uh... I don't hold any grudges on that. The place is dangerous. Yeah. Um, now... Yeah, those berries look interesting, though. Uh, did you want to try them? No. Let's, uh... Let Laftal take a look at that stuff first. Because, Leva, you said you didn't recognize these for me thing, right? Yes, correct. Mm. Yeah, let's let Laft will take a look at them. Make sure they're not poisonous. Just had an image of the Kix uh, advertisement. Make Laft will eat it! <laughs> <laughs> yes? Alright, so yeah, you're, just gonna, you're, just gonna keep the, uh, you're just gonna keep the berries in the pouch for now. Yeah, yeah, for right now. Alright, um, while uh, both... Uh, Large sack. Um, Higamus and Leva... Yeah, the sack is plenty large enough. Uh, Higamus and Leva, while you were flying around, you did take note of something. Um, you know, you just kind of registered it and only had a chance to think about it once everything was done and everyone was safe. Um, you thought you saw some... Uh, um, uh, crows circling uh, a little ways out 
Um, somewhere around... Am I on the right thing? Let's see. Somewhere around here. In this area. Where? Where? Oh, I'm on the wrong uh, layer. Sorry. Ah. Ah. Oh. Okay. There's some crows out this way. Can we go yeah, check it out? I saw that too. I saw that too. It's weird. Let's go there. Okay. Maybe okay. that cat went around the swamp rather than towards it. Hmm. Crows were signified something might be dead though, huh? Let's yeah. check it out. Could be. Uh, Brax is going to head towards the road so that he can hustle along the road. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd probably want to all go to the road. Yeah. 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 Alright, uh, you make your way to the road and uh, head out in that direction. Um, Lurik and his group coming along. Uh, Lurik, uh, Lurik uh, kind of agrees with you, Higamus, that uh, um, crows definitely could signify some sort of uh, um, dead creature or carrion or something like that. Uh, it takes you about a, a half an hour to get out there. Um, yeah. And... Uh, you do find in uh, past, uh, um, you know, kind of an old uh, um, tumble-down paddock wall, um, the remains of uh, two dead sheep. Sheep? Hmm. Freshly dead or old? Uh, you probably wouldn't really know. Um, you'd have to like go in and, and start like poking at them and seeing. Oh, Are Brax is going to say. There? Do they stink or not? Brax yeah, is going to say. There's not much stay smell back. yet. Let's let's get Lurik for, to check for tracks. Yeah, good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, I just realized something. Mm -hmm. uh, Laftel uh, mentioned to me. I should have put my other ring on. Which one? Uh, my water mage ring. Oh. I could have yeah. walked right on top of all that stuff. Yeah, that would have helped. That would have helped. Could I have thought... carried both of them out of there. <laughs> um, you could have shown them your ability to walk on water. Alright, so uh, um, when you when you mentioned uh, Lurk looking for traps, he uh, he says, yeah, that's a good idea. Let me, uh, let me look around. Um... After a, uh, a few minutes, uh, um, he circles back to you and says, Only thing are sheep tracks. Yeah, well, maybe it's something that looks like a sheep then. Unless it's something that flies. Uh, these, these definitely look like uh, the ones that we've seen before. <sighs> Let's have a look at these cuts then. You were saying it's parallel cuts. Yep, he uh, he brings oh, you all in is. and points out uh, kind of things that he saw before. Um, deep, deep parallel cuts. It's hard to say exactly how many. Uh, it's definitely more than um, two. Whether it's three or four or five, it's hard to tell just because of the uh, the nature of the uh, the destruction to the body. It's just been torn apart. And as far as you can tell, nothing has been eaten. I mean, there were some crows uh, that took off as you approached. Oh, um, is there any notches on the bones where we might be able to see uh, what hit the sheep? Uh, there are, but uh, I don't think any of you are proficient in anything related to that, unless you can think of something that you got. I think uh, I think Brex might be able to whittle something out of a bone. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's there's entrails like like spilled out from their uh, interiors. Uh, one of them almost looks like it was ripped o open. Uh, ripped yeah. open. Yeah. What from inside? Well, no, not from inside, but as opposed to slashed apart. Yeah. You know, like you would rip it apart kind of thing. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, you can see all the entrails and everything like that. You, it doesn't look like anything has been eaten. It, it doesn't. This doesn't look like a, a prey kill uh, of a, a predator that would kill to eat. <sighs> that dwarf didn't have any weapon like this. All he had was the axe. Yeah. So I don't know of any dwarf weapons that do this sort of thing. How fresh were these bodies, or could we tell? Um, they weren't like super fresh or anything, were they? Well, they Are don't they really smell still? much yet. Are they warm? Um, it's hard to tell whether they're. I mean, they're they're not they're not like cold, cold. Mm. But uh, whether they're just like air temperature or something like that, um, you don't really know. Don't exactly have a thermometer. Is uh, the blood clotted? Or is it still kind of dribbling out a little bit? Um, Some of it looks like it's clotted, uh, but there's still some, you know, there's there's blood smears and sprays all over the place. Okay, so if I kind of squish it a little bit, some blood will ooze still. Uh, from the bodies, yes. Okay. Hey, Higamus, can you fly more than once a day? I don't know. So, um, well, if you, if you fly up in the air, if there's anything that killed these around, maybe you could see it. All you right. got a spyglass with you? Mm, no, I don't. Uh, do you have uh, your spyglass on you, uh... Walker. Did Docker even get one? I thought it was Yeldon that had the other. My what? Yeah, I thought Yeldon had the other spell glass. Uh, I, I never got a spell glass. Did I? Oh, I thought you got one. Okay, no, I usually keep mine on the ship because it can be broken pretty easily. Right. It was and you and Yeldon that had spell glasses. Mm -hmm. Well, I can take a look up up in the air and just to see if I can see anything from a higher vantage. I'll I will fly you. up. I right. come with you. Uh, let's see. How long does uh, the fly spell last, Leva? Oh, just a second. One turn per level plus one d six turns. Okay. Yeah, you'd still be able to fly. Uh, you'd probably suspect that you're nearing the end of its uh, um, duration, though. Okay. Um, or maybe in the last half or quarter kind of thing. So, uh, just so you keep that in mind. Um, alright, so you, uh, you fly up. Um, you do see, uh, you're pretty sure this here... Let me see if I'm on the right thing. Yeah. You're pretty sure that this right here is a farmhouse. Uh, you can see uh, a couple buildings cl cuddled together, uh, huddled together, um, and... Uh, what's clearly some sort of animal pen attached to it. You're close enough to it to uh, see that. Um, sure. And you can also see what you're pretty sure are some flocks of sheep out in the fields. There's one down here, um, you know, one up in this area, one on the uh, hills over here. Uh, mm -hmm. It's hard to say whether, you know, whose houses they're associated with. Hmm. Is I don't see any horrible monster running around nope. anywhere. <laughs> is is Hickamus reporting that back? Uh, he'll report yeah, it, I will. He'll report it back when he lands. Maybe it uh, is anything out of the monster. ordinary? Nothing that you would rank as out of the ordinary. Okay. Uh, are, the sheep aren't, like, scattering about anywhere? No, they're pretty like clearly they flocked to together. Anywhere. They're They're pretty okay. clearly flocked together. Uh, oh, what are the other questions I can think off the top of my head? Mm. Oh, I can't think of anything else. But that's uh, definitely a farm building right there, close by. Uh, yeah. You're pretty sure, we'll put it that way. Pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Alright, I will hop down then. Okay. I'm about to hop down. Maybe. Leva, did you have any... I'm in for a landing. 
Leva, did you have any, you're up there with him, is there anything that you would want to look specifically for? I want to see whether there are more birds anywhere. Um, I mean, there's crows, um, but, uh, you haven't really seen any, like, vultures, uh, or other, you know, big carrion birds, um. Do any of these fields, that's not just now that we're flying, but do any of these fields have sick scarecrows in them? Most of this area is... Uh, grazing land um, so there there might be some uh, small far uh, small fields around this farmhouse but mm -hmm. uh, you're not close enough um, to see what those fields might contain you're not seeing like big stretched out fields they, there'd be more like you know little household fields for primarily for their own use. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we're down, I, I, I have uh, Tayan smell the sheep, the killed sheep. Uh, he is pretty repulsed by it. Um, he, he's indicating that uh, um, there's still a, a pretty strong stench of fear on these things. Oh. I just remembered. I have a detect magic. Why on earth would it be scared? <laughs> well, we had talk with animal. It's repulsed. Scared by the. F it... Sorry, I was trying to make a joke. Yeah, I got it. Why would these uh, eviscerate sheep be scared? Exactly. Uh, you want to cast detect magic, Leva? Yes. Mm hmm. I could think of quite a few reasons. You are not detecting any magic from the sheep. Ah. We're not dealing with the magic sheep. No, no magic where sheep are banned. Oh. Okay. Is there any uh, residual magic around the area? Nope. Okay. Hmm. Anybody else got anything? Uh, I can... I will detect evil intent from the sheep. They're they're dead. Oh. <laughs> Does Tayan detect more? More what? More than just uh, uh, the fear from the sheep. Does he smell anything? Could these, uh... Sorry. He smells something that he can't identify that uh, he strongly dislikes. Um, hmm. But he cannot... He cannot convey to you anything more than that it is uh, completely unfamiliar to him and he does not like it. Smell bad. Uh, I'll look to uh, how you pronounce his name? Lurk? Lurk. Yeah. Lurk. Uh, is there any tracks around here that you can see? Uh, he already reported that there, uh, he only found uh, sheep tracks, but he's been looking uh, uh, some more while you guys were examining the corpses. He's, at this point, he's examined enough of these that he kind of already concluded that uh, um, there's nothing unusual compared to the other ones that he's encountered. Like, there's nothing new about these that he hasn't seen before. So he's been looking around uh, with his companions, um, and uh, he comes back in and says, Um... <sighs> My guess, and again, keep in mind that I'm by no means an expert on this, um, I think these uh, sheep were probably running from something, then came in here, and that's and they were killed. Mm. Which uh, way were they running from? Uh, it kind of gestures to the north. Seems like they may have crossed the road. I didn't go all the way up that way, but uh, that would be my guess. Mm. All right, well... That'll be the next way to go, I guess. Look around. Uh, Leva, the berries are not magical. Okay. <laughs> could could those crows be um, abnormal crows that could do this? Wouldn't I see that in the tech magic? If they were magical. magical crows? I mean, they, 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 they could be abnormal crows, but not magical. I mean, a were-sheep would not detect as magical. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> is it worth us killing a crow and having a look at it? See if um, see if they got talons that come out or something. They're uh, it's pretty standard sized crows. So these wounds are bigger than they are, right? They're bigger than than their feet by a pretty large stretch. We'll put it that way. Well, suppose you had a crow that could transform itself and enlarge, or maybe a spellcaster that can enlarge crows. Uh, they don't look like bird, like talon marks. Uh, the these slashes, uh, Lurk will tell you. Right. But Lurk says, I mean, if you want me to shoot one of the crows down, I, I'll do it. Well, yeah, I mean, I could shoot one down myself. I'm just wondering if that, that if someone's using something that's already here to kill these sheep. Ah, uh, well, shoot. Go ahead and try to shoot one down, then, Braxton. In uh, where you do that, I'm going to uh, look over these uh, wounds again, mm -hmm. see if like there's anything like left behind in the wounds, type of thing. Okay. Braxton, okay. before before you go and kill one, let's try and find one, uh, get one alive, because uh, I mean, Lafto can talk to these animals, so maybe they've seen something. How are you going True. to get one alive? Well, we have to think of something. <laughs> you could catch yeah, Ray's dead on the sheep. <laughs> Wait, Lafto could use one his ring that uh, can grab stuff. Tell yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Lafto isn't here, is he? <laughs> We'd have to take the crows to him. Oh. What if we get back from the sheep and let them come back? And then throw well, something over one of them. Shoot one down, if you want to look at it. And uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to look at these wounds just real quick to see if uh, there's anything inside it that was left behind. Okay. Who knows? <laughs> oh! <laughs> you, you, uh... You just kind of like casually, like raise your bow, draw back, let fly, and boom! Just drop a, a crow, just drops to the ground. Like you, it, this was completely effortless on your part. Uh, you go over to the uh, um, the core uh, crow corpse, and uh, that that arrow took it right through the neck. Right. Um, do you want to like slice it open and examine it? Um, might bring it back to Lurik, see if he can, uh, look at the feet. I don't know where it's worth taking it back intact. I mean, you're, you're wondering if there's anything special about it, so, um... Yeah, right. Well, yeah, I don't I mean, think Braxton has crow... crow anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he could, I suppose he could chop it up. He'd take I it mean, back to the others. I mean, you, you know enough about, like animals to, to know whether there's anything obvious, like if you sliced it open and oh look, there's a giant claw inside of it that could come out, you would recognize that. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, All right. It's up to you, do you want to just take it back, take it to Lurik and have him look, or do you want to slice it open? Um, he'll take it back to the others and do a crow autopsy. Okay. Uh, you do not see anything that strikes you as unusual, Lurik agrees. Uh, seems like a pretty normal crow. He does compliment yeah. you on your uh, shot, though. Thank you. Uh, does uh, Brax's arrow get broken? Roll d20. Nope. Oh, yes. Anything inside these wounds? Nope, Left you're on. not finding any any like grit or um, you know bits of broken blade or anything like that. I'd like that. Uh, but you're uh, also uh, keep in mind that you're not an expert at this sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have I encountered everything in my fuzzy bag? I don't think so. Can I check around for something biggish? That's a bird. That's flying. That feels like it's it might fly. Something biggish with with feathers. I mean, you were keeping. Uh, uh, no, they all feel the same, uh, pretty much. Um, the you do you know everything that I mean? Like you were keeping a, a list of things. Yes, but the owl is. Uh, we, we thought of the owl, but the owl is killed. So I I have nothing else that I can think of. 
Do you want to try drawing an owl anyway? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes, there's a, a large owl. That went off the table. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you draw out one of the uh, um, fuzzy objects and uh, uh, toss it out. And let me see. You do not get an owl, however. Let me see what you get. Actually, I shouldn't say that yet, because uh, you just didn't get to control what came out. Um, you pull out a uh, um, uh, a brown ball and toss it to the ground. Uh, you're pretty. You realize, like, pretty quickly that that is not an owl, as it grows substantially larger into a bear. <laughs> <laughs> kind of growls and, and waits for you to indicate what you uh, want. To be fair, it could have been an owl bear. Uh, I told it to go back into the into the bag, if I can do so. Uh, Lurk's companions are uh, quite impressed by uh, uh, this uh, magic trick, as it you, you know you you tossed out a little uh, uh, fuzzy object that grew into a uh, um, a bear, and then commanded it back into the bag and it shrinks down into a fuzzy object uh, and <laughs> leaps into your hand and you shove it back in the bag. Alright, I'll try again. The point yeah, is that the where's, the, where's, bag. The, but the point is with a bigger uh, bird, it, it, it could take an, a, a crow and actually crow and, and actually keep it on the ground. Okay, so uh, once again you try for an owl. Mm -hmm. Okay, this time you do get an owl. Um, it is brown. Uh, it is just a s pretty standard barn owl type owl. Mm -hmm. um, which I don't think are bigger than crows. Mm. I mean, they come in different sizes. Yeah, but this is a pretty standard barn owl, though. I'm trying to figure out why we're trying to get crows again? So that Laftel can speak to one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, he might not even have taken uh, speak with animals today. Who knows? Yeah. Do we have a way to catch the crow once we have it? Well, that's why she was trying to bring out an owl. Okay. Yeah, so the owl catches the crow. Mm -hmm. But if the owl is a similar size to the crow, the crow will fight the owl. Yeah. We can try it. Let's try it. I tell the, the, the owl... Uh, <laughs> can I tell the owl... You order the owl to uh, uh, grab one of the crows. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and uh, let's see. Epic crow and owl fight. Let me actually you get look NPC up the... versus NPC combat. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm more curious to see uh, uh, what we're looking at in terms of like what a crow can but... do. The crows might buddy up, you know. That that could be. Could mm -hmm. be. Do, do, do. It's deathmatch. Crow versus owl. Psh, death That's battle. illegal in many countries. <laughs> um. Yeah. The uh, the owl quickly gets swarmed by uh, crows, and uh, um, you're left with uh, just kind of a uh, um, bloody owl paste. Okay, that didn't work. When they bring, uh, when they bring down the uh, the owl, do they actually land on it? So could we jump on them? No, this was all in the air. Okay, what a pity. <sighs> murder of crows turns into an actual murder scene. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Great. <laughs> Would the rest of us been had had an opportunity to support the? Uh... The owl with arrows and stuff. Uh, you would have risked hitting the owl? And well, the point was to take one of these alive? Yeah. Well, we, don't need, owl. we don't need the others alive. <laughs> we could eat them for dinner. I'm not eating crow. 
Braxton will eat a crow. So, so that plan didn't work. Oh, what a pity. Can we uh, use Braxton's uh, rope to grab a, a crow out of the air? Might be a bit hard to lasso a crow. You can't really tie up a crow with a thick rope. Uh, Lever, can you, to... um, can you stun crows with your, uh, your, uh, stones? It's more likely to kill them. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll probably miss. She can't do sub dual damage with, um, haven't you got any soft stones? Soft stones? <laughs> yeah, just hit them with mud or something. You mean tissue paper stones? Yeah. Or beanie bags? I'm not sure you have the requisite equipment or spells on hand to uh, easily capture a small bird alive here. All right, there's one thing I'm for it. I could, I, I could roast them. You could absolutely there's... roast them. I'm not sure that that qu quite qualifies as capturing one alive <laughs> there's only one way there's only one way out of this Higimus can you fly after a crow and catch it <laughs> um probably not I'm not very agile <laughs> do you think I could put on the boots and fly after a crow and catch it no because it's the same regardless of who's wearing them also, uh, uh, Higamus, you're pretty sure that the crows can fly faster than you can with those boots, anyway. On an, well, on top of being more maneuverable. Well, you could just take the crow we killed and cast Ray's dead on it, eventually. <laughs> That's true. But we have chopped up a bit. Does Ray's dead even work on non-humanoids? I... Uh, honestly, I do not see why it would not work on a crow. Um, on the other hand, why you would cast Raise Dead on a crow, I don't know. Plus, a question. it's a few levels away for Laftal, and by a few, I can't I mean, even like, cast more. I can't even cast it, so it's soulless that would have to cast it. You could, you could reincarnate it. Ha have oh, you yeah. not heard? Have you not heard the song? There was an old lady who resurrected a crow. Why she do I resurrected know? a crow? I don't know why. Do you guys right, have so... any ideas on, on capturing one of these alive that doesn't involve pretty clearly uh, uh, not capturing them alive tactics? Uh, oh, I have an idea. Agnes, throw up and draw a net over them. Do you have a net? And you can't get close enough. They'll pace you. Uh, do we have a net? Let me check my inventory. Uh, can anyone be become invisible? So why are we trying to get these crows? I mean, so that Laughter uh, can speak to one. Uh, yeah. Okay. But, I don't have a net, but I do have a sack we could throw over them. Can anyone become invisible? I recommended Not invisibility today. before, and we were told that wouldn't be a good idea. Not today. Nice. Okay. It's just if I... someone became invisible and sat near the cro near the dead sheep, they would come back to eat the sheep. Unless, of course, they smelled you. True. I could haste you, Braxton, and you could go and race one and get it. Uh, no, I don't like that. It makes me feel older. <laughs> so, again, does anyone have any serious plans that could actually have a chance of capturing one of these things? Uh, can alive? Braxton's boots allow him to hop? And leap onto a crow. Mm, the crows would be way faster than you. Right. Okay. I'm out of ideas then. But, um, uh, we've got a crow we can eat for dinner. I got an idea. I, I got something here. Okay. Um, I take off my ring of uh, freedom movement. Mm -hmm. I put on my other ring, my water ring. Mm hmm. And um, I'm not sure how far I can make this go, but can I dump all the create water on above one of the crows? 
Uh, you would almost certainly not actually succeed in dumping it on one. Oh, okay. Well, nope, that's my only idea. And, Sorry, guys. And the water is the. Uh, it it all it would do is just like soak it. Really, you're you're not you're oh, okay. not gonna um like stun it or uh, cause it to be unable to fly or something like that. Okay. I could I kill them all. <laughs> so could Leva. What, what if uh yeah. what if what if Hickamus created a wall of ice above the crows? Again, that would kill them. <laughs> I thought our goal what, was to kill them. It, no, your goal is to try to capture one alive so that Laptal can speak to it. Why? But, but would it kill all of them? It would kill all yeah. the ones that would be in the area of effect, and all the ones that weren't in the area of effect would be completely unaffected and not captured. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it... It does 3d10 points damage. <laughs> the minimum damage is enough to kill them. You could roll three ones and it would kill them. <laughs> what about the vortex? Uh. Oh wait! I don't know I what that idea. does offhand. I can blind them. A vortex is, a, is is an interesting spell. Uh, can I? What if I blind them? Can I make them crash into the ground? Oh, uh, I mean, if you really want to expend a whole bunch of charges on a wand that could otherwise be useful, otherwise, uh, yeah, could, um, I really like... don't. could uh, Braxton make a cold shot and shoot one in the wing? You can try. Let's try that before we go into overkill. Yeah, that's the thing is that the crows might. Certainly have a chance to die. Okay, now with that kind of roll now, that was a wide miss. Okay, can Braxton find his arrow? I roll 1d10. I mean, roll 1d20. Uh, Not 20. 1d20. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there there is a, an arrow macro. Yeah. Nope. Either you lost that arrow, or you found it and it was broken. Either way, it's gone. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can keep trying uh, called shots until you succeed. Um, or run out of arrows. Or run out of arrows. But that's also time-consuming and everything like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to make it hard for you, but I'm honestly not sure that you guys have anything that would easily make this succeed. Yeah. I can think of quite a few ways right off the hand, off the bat, but... All of them are ways that I know you guys don't have available to you right this moment. There are certainly going to be other ways that you could do this, but I haven't heard them from you yet. I mean, the only other thing I could think of is to chunk your rock at one to knock it out, but that would kill it. Do we have anything Quite to, possibly. to... Do we have anything like food that the, uh, uh, a crow would come to us? Probably not that would actually come to you. I mean, if you dropped it down, it would, you know, and you were 20 feet away, it might land on it. And then if you had a, a net with small enough uh, uh, holes, you might be able to try it. A sack is not going to work. Um, Why not? I don't think the crows are going to trust you guys at this point. So a sack wouldn't work because uh, it's too small. The reason a net would work is because it's like, t you know, 10 feet wide. But again, the the net would have to have uh, very small netting, which most netting that you would use against a person would probably be ha be too open wait, wait, wait. to use against uh, a crow. What about like a uh, bedding or blanket? You actually carry that with you, as opposed to leaving it up at the. No, I don't have tower. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> That How would about... be left up at camp. Right, that's kind of what I figured. A sleep about, spell would uh... work too, but I'm pretty sure no one memorized the sleep spell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I How about... agree. How How about, things uh... around, around this point have too many hit points for a sleep spell. It's How about the reason Higibus why sleep drags spells the, the dead sheep behind us to, to make the crows follow us? You might not keep get these crows, though. True. I think we give up on this idea. 
Oh, uh, you know what? I do have something here. Okay. I do have something. I don't know if it'll necessarily work in this case here, but I guess we can try it. I haven't ever used it yet in this entire time. All right. Well... Uh, I'll pull a potion uh -huh. of uh, animal control. Okay. Um, I guess I'll take a drink of that. All right. Give me a second to uh, take a look at the potion. Because I don't know exactly what it does, but might as well try. Uh, see if birds count as animals. Yeah. Never heard of a potion of bird control. Mm, most of the potions control? of animal control, yeah, it would be a potion of avian control, but uh, most of the potions of animal control affect specific things. Do, do, do. Okay, you just have it listed as a potion of animal control, correct? Correct. Alright, hold on a second. Because the question is whether I rolled up what it was or not and told you. You don't happen to remember offhand. Nope, nope, I found it. Okay. Alright. Um. <laughs> Okay, um, you, uh, you drink it down, and, uh, you sense the emotions of all of these, uh, the crows around you. The emotions? Yep. And you realize that you have the ability to control those emotions. Oh. This was, in fact, a potion of mammal, marsupial, and avian control. Um, so okay. Uh, I will... Hmm, I seem to be able to, be able to manipulate their emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, make them love me? Um, it's more that you can, like, make them not fear you. Okay, we'll try that. Okay. Um, are you trying this on all of them, or just are you going to focus on one? Uh, let's uh, focus on, like, a couple of them. Okay. Um, so they were, they were flying aw around, you know, kind of like uh, landing occasionally some distance away, hopping, squawking, that sort of thing. Uh, as soon as you exert this uh, um, emotional control over them, um, they swoop in and start uh, pecking at the corpses, completely ignoring okay. you guys. All right. I will kind of walk over gently, uh, make sure to keep that uh, um, friendliness thing going. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I can get close to them, I will gently grab Okay, so um, rather than grab it, you, you gently pick one up. Um, it kind of turns its head and, and tilts its head at you and squawks a bit, but it uh, doesn't seem to be uh, like trying to free itself. You're not squeezing it hard or anything like that. Okay, I'm going to pull out a sack mm -hmm. and uh, put it in the sack. Uh, that it starts Draw squawking up. at. Um, but you are able to get it in, and now you have a uh, uh, a squawking crow flapping around inside a sack. All right. There you go. I hand that off to Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> hey. Okay. 
Uh, you do realize that you could probably, in the future, with something similar, um, use this sort of thing to uh, make animals hostile to specific individuals. Huh. <laughs> I was thinking, hmm, should I have him go attack Braxton for all this trouble? Um, no, that would be Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right. My fault. So, I I shove the bag into the Braxton's arms and then say, "All right, let's go." Oh, okay. I guess I'll carry the crow then. Lurk oh. says, "Just don't eat it." No, I won't eat it. <laughs> it's not uh, dead. I won't won't eat dead living crows. It'd be a shame to to waste the other one. All right. Uh, let's. Head off. Okay. Okay. What were we gonna do after this? What were you gonna right. do after this? Uh, what were we gonna do to follow where the sheep were running away from? Okay. Going up that way. Yep. All right. Um, I think that we will take our break now. Then we'll be back okay. in about uh, ten minutes, and I think that we will switch over to uh, the other group and uh, let them do what they were gonna do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. Brax Braxton will sing gently to the crow to keep it calm. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to be helping. It is uh, stuck in a bag, uh, a sack. Uh, it is squawking, and uh, I mean, it does eventually tire itself out. But uh, you can definitely tell that it is not a happy crow. It is not a happy crow. <laughs> I bet it's in a sack. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna get murdered by crows. Well, not me, Braxton. <laughs> <laughs> what what we'll, is it my fault? We'll see. But <laughs> you're the one holding it now. <laughs> you're the one left holding the bag. Yeah. <laughs> it's true on multiple levels. So we'll be back in about uh, 10 minutes, everyone.